Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Welcome back to my Walter Boss Run in Don't Starve Together. We just paid our first visit to Pearl and earned a few friendship points. But summer is here and I have a sizable shopping list for the season. First few days I'm going to spend fishing at the Oasis for the Desert Goggle Blueprint. Once I get that, I can go fight Antlion. Unfortunately, after a few days, we only found the fashion goggles print, and I don't want to spend all season fishing, so I'm going to revisit this towards the end of the season. Hopefully, we'll have better luck then. So I'm heading down to the caves. I need to deconstruct my Mooncaller staff before I go to the archive, so I'm clearing some of the regenerated ruins. I had one proud moment where I managed to line up the attacks from two bishops at the set piece and kite them both. I'm totally not being smug. But just the fact that I can do this is reason enough to bring a beefalo into the caves. I always feel awful deconstructing my first Mooncaller staff because it is usually not even close to being used up. But I need that opal for the archives, so away it goes. At least once we fire up the Moonstorms, we can run as many Moonstone events as we want. Now we can travel to the archive, which is located past the Lunar Grotto. The blue mush tree biome is usually connected to both the grotto and the muddy biome, so the archives are easy to find. Once inside, we can insert the opal and activate the knowledge fountains. The only blueprint I want from here is the astral detector, and that is the blue fountain. The other two blueprints are not really important for fighting bosses, so I'm skipping them for now. The easiest way for me to remember the puzzle sequence is to give each circle a number, so the spot at 12 o'clock can be 1 and then increment clockwise around the circle. That way all I have to do while brute forcing the combo is remember a short number sequence. For example, the sequence here ended up being 4, 2, 1, 3, 7, 6, 5, 8. If you have good spatial recognition then maybe visualizing the sequence is easier, but I'm much better with just remembering a few numbers. If you forget to grab a thulacite from the ruins, you can mine one of the archive statues for a piece before leaving. Be sure to bring at least one back with you so you can craft an astral detector. I fought Ancient Guardian again, using a combination of marble and gold rounds. I was trying to save my cursed rounds for Antlion, so towards the end I resorted to the Beeflo's melee attack. It's doable, just kinda risky. A beeflo can only take about 10 or 11 horns up the nose before dying, so usually it feels like more risk than necessary. The loot was 3 greens and 10 thulacite. Super nice. I rode back up to the surface to do some more oasis fishing. Only took another couple of rods to grab the desert goggles, so now it's time to kill Antlion in the last two days of summer. It's either that or wait until next summer to finish the bosses. I'd rather do it now. I'm gonna use Cursed Rounds to kill Antlion. She's a perfect, completely stationary target for the Shadow Tentacles. I can even fight her from outside of the sandcastles. So I'm gonna run around in a circle and fire one to two rounds between her attacks. You're gonna wanna use the mouse button to attack, otherwise you might waste some rounds by targeting the spikes. As with most slingshot strategies, this is not a fast way to kill her, but it is much safer. You don't run the risk of getting trapped with sand spikes if you keep moving. There's a lot more room to maneuver around, and if you get hurt, you can just run away and reset the fight. To kill Antline, I'm going to use 69 rounds. A fitting cursed number for this type of ammo. Autumn is here and I'm going to finish up Pearl's quests so we can grab the pearl. So we're going to start off by planting 10 butterflies by her bee box. And then we can plant and fertilize 8 berry bushes. I mean, what was she even doing for food before I came along? Anyways, that brings us up to 6 friendship points. Four more to go. One regrettable task we have left to do is harvest 10 shells from the cookie cutters around salt formations. Cookie cutters have a 25% chance of dropping a shell when killed, so collecting 10 can be very tedious and take a few days if your luck is bad. I learned that if you hit one of them before they hop onto your boat, it will actually scare off all the nearby cookie cutters and that can be useful if too many are swimming towards your boat at the same time. It's easy to be overwhelmed if they all decide to hop onto your boat simultaneously, so it's good to know that there is an option for playing it safe. And Walter is all about safety. These 10 shells are the final ingredient for upgrading Pearl's house. Unfortunately, I had to make a quick trip back home to grab the cactus flowers I had left in a bundle. But then we sail back and upgrade her house all the way with rope, cookie shells, boards, marble, Moonrock and cactus flowers. 
That's nine friendship points. Because Pearl didn't give me a heavy-weighted lure for catching the fish that she likes, I'm gonna just winch up all the junk around her island for the final friendship point. I try to avoid this task if possible because it's tedious. But at this point, it'll take less time than hunting for five heavy ocean fish, and getting that pearl finally is worth the effort. Now it's time to start hunting for the Celestial Sanctum. At first, the astral detector will point towards the location of the two sanctum pieces on the mainland, then it will point to the inviting formations on the lunar island, and finally to the celestial tribute underneath Crab King. If you keep a hammer on you while using the detector, then you only ever need to make one. Astral detectors cost one thulacite and one moon rock, and hammering it at any durability returns both ingredients. So when it gets low durability, just hammer and recraft and that will save you a fair bit of resources. After we dig up both sanctum pieces, we can go sailing. Because we've already mined the inviting formations, the detector should now point us straight to Crab King. And there he is, situated very close to the lunar island. This will be very convenient for delivering the tribute after we fight Crab King. So let's get ready for the fight. But first I got a batch of marble to harvest, and it would be a shame to not use Berger for the job while he's awake in autumn. Then I'm gonna drop him off in the deciduous forest far away from evergreens and beefalo. I'm a little low on weather pain, so I'm gonna grab a deconstruction staff from the ruins, break a few of my low durability weather panes, and craft them again with a construction amulet. This will save on down feathers and also conserve volt goat horns, of which I've only gathered five. That should give me enough weather panes for Crab King. I'm also collecting stingers so that I can make around 30 boat patches. Now, technically, I can just as easily use boards and twigs to repair the boat, but just in case I get hit by geysers, I can patch up those holes. I'm also going to shave some beeflow to make a beeflow hat. Again, I didn't need to do this. Any insulating clothing will protect me from freezing damage during the fight. I just got so used to wearing a beefalo hat during practice fights that I couldn't get it out of my head. Unfortunately, Action Cube betrayed me here, and I ended up shaving Pinky along with the other beefalo. Talk about betrayal. I feel almost as bad as Pinky looks. Almost. The silver lining is this should not directly affect domestication. It will cut the buck timer significantly, and until she grows her fur back, I'll only be able to ride her for about 2.5 minutes. Goes without saying, you do not want to shave a beefalo while taming. But aside from the ego damage, this should not affect our relationship too adversely. I'm going to make 90 freeze rounds for Crab King. This costs as much in blue gems as a bunch of ice staves, but the benefit is that Walter won't be draining tons of sanity during the fight. I accidentally used one of these on another beefalo, but interestingly enough, freeze rounds do not aggro the herd. Are there other ranged weapons that do this as well? I learned something new today. I imagine that would also be useful for freezing clockworks in the ruins. I also discovered a bug. When you log off while riding a shaved beefalo, it will appear to have grown its wool back when you rejoin the game. This is unfortunately just a visual glitch. The beefalo is still shaved, and you can't just shave it again. But at least Pinky's dignity can be restored, if only superficially. Now, Rob Kozoki, who pioneered the compass method for figuring out what side of Crab King to position your boat, always happens to join my streams when I'm about to fight Crab King. And he tipped me off to another trick about boats. They basically act as their own compass. As in, the plank will always be on the southwest corner of the boat. That means that when the plank is at 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock, you can position the boat underneath Crab King and be in range of just two imposing claws. So once again, the compass is useless for solo play. Thanks for the many tips, Rob. Seriously, go check out his channel. For Crab King, I'm gonna socket eight purple gems and the pearl. This will give us mega geysers, but if we freeze him consistently, we won't have to worry about that. He'll take three shots to freeze, which takes about as much time as six ice staff casts. Aside from the ice rounds, the fight is the same strategy that Lochnish illustrates in his guide on Crab King, and I won't go into too much detail here. So if you want the details, I'll link his video in the description. Just make sure that you nudge the boat back after freezing him the first time. This will allow Walter to continue attacking the claws while Crab King does his ice cast. This fight is tough because one misstep and your boat can get a bunch of geyser holes or get clawed to death. If we get hit by one freeze attack, just once, the fight is lost. So there's a lot at stake. Crab King finally died at the top of winter. I used up four weather panes, 14 boat patches, 
nine boards, and 67 freeze rounds. Then we could winch up the tribute and bring it straight over to the lunar island. Smooth sailing from here. Just kidding. Walter almost died to a surprise pangle attack. My life-giving amulet was in Wobi. The run almost ended due to pangles. I can't believe how close that was. Little demon birds! What the hell is their problem? This game is evil, I swear to God. Whatever losers, let's fire up the Moonstorm. Time to go give Wagstaff a few visits and assemble the Lunar Siphonator. Next time we finally take on Celestial Champion and then all that's left to kill is Malbatross and Toadstool. Thanks for watching and hope you can join me for the final bosses in the Walter run. Coming very soon. Take care.